book, Philippians chapter 1, verse number 6, um, is where we're going to read. I'm going to be reading from a New American Standard Bible. Whatever your Bible is, if you brought a Bible with you, turn it there and read along silently with us as we read out loud in Philippians chapter 1, beginning with and with verse number 6. If you're there, say amen. 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 Verse 6 says, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. And our candidates, please, please listen to me um, through this text and through this scripture. For I am confident, Paul says, of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. And I want to talk to you from a simple subject. It ain't over yet. All right. It's, it, amen. That's, that's bad grammar, but that's good preaching. It ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come thanking you for this is another opportunity to worship. We thank you for this now, our responsibility, uh, our obligation, uh, as well as our privilege to stand and declare your word. We confess we can't do it without you. We are nothing without you. But we know, oh God, that if you would use us and bless us and empower us to preach, and that we can't help but be successful in preaching your word. So we pray that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It ain't over yet. In Florence, Italy, in Florence, Italy, there is a museum that houses unfinished works, unfinished artworks, for Michelangelo. Michael, the great Michelangelo, has a great deal of unfinished artistic work. Sketches that he started that he didn't finish, um, portraits that he started that he didn't finish, yeah. sculptures that he started that he didn't finish, and they are housed in this museum uh, uh, in Florence, Italy. And people come from all over the world to visit this museum and to see and to look upon the unfinished work of Michelangelo. Are y'all praying with me? And, and, and one of the things, one of the things that as I thought about that, that came into my mind is, is that we don't want to become a museum of unfinished ministry for Jesus Christ, amen, at this church. We don't want candidates, members, we don't want Pleasant Green to become a museum of unfinished ministry for the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want to be an unfinished piece that God didn't complete. Now, now it, it, but we need to qualify this that Paul is saying that you don't have to be unfinished. If God has started a work in you in salvation, that he is going to bring it to a conclusion. And so because, because what God is doing in our lives spiritually won't be undone, won't be unfinished, then all of the other things that are touched by the spiritual but are practical in our lives, they don't need to be unfinished either. Are y'all praying with me? Because we don't want to become the museum of the unfinished at this church. We don't want to be people who start stuff and then don't finish it. We don't want to be people who start high school and then drop out of high school. We don't want to be people who start college Preach, Pastor Banks, I'm preaching. We don't want to be people who start college and then don't finish college. Are y'all praying with me? We don't want to be people who start marriages and enter into marriages and then don't keep those marriages together. Are y'all praying with me? We don't want to be folks who have children and then don't raise the children. 
and the fear and admonition of the Lord. Yes, sir. And we don't want to be church members who just join the church, right. but you don't keep coming to church. Right. And you don't serve in ministry in the church. Right. We don't want to be museums of the unfinished. Right. And Paul said, you ain't got to be that. You don't have to be uh, 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 in that category in your life, in your spiritual life, and in your walk with the Lord. Because whatever God started in you, he's going to bring it to its perfection. Am I in the text? He's going to finish what he started. Because God is not the God who, walk, who starts something and then walks away from it. He, he's not like the deists. You know, the deists believe that God created the heavens and the earth. And then he walked away from it. And then everything's just going on like we want it to go. And God ain't got nothing to do with it. God's not like that. God is not the God of the deeds. God is actively involved in bringing to pass his divine will and purpose in all of our lives. That's how you got there in the first place. If God hadn't already predestined you to become a child of God, you never would have been here to accept Christ as your son. Preach, Pastor, but I know I'm preaching. Because none of us got here on our own. We didn't suddenly come to our senses. Paul said it is by grace that you are saved. Right. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. God chose you. You didn't choose him. Amen. God found you. He wasn't lost. We were lost. Amen. Are y'all praying with me? Yes, sir. And so Paul said, listen, you don't have to be unfinished in any aspect of your life. And he said, I'm confident of this very thing, yeah. that he who started a good work in you uh -huh. will perfect to the day of Christ right. Jesus. Right. In other words, he's saying that what God started in you in salvation, yeah. he is going to conclude, he's going to keep working on you until Jesus comes yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I love this, this text because it really just unfolds and unpacks itself. Uh, it, all, all Paul is saying is three things. He's saying that God started it, salvation, Amen. in your life. God will stay with your salvation. In, in, in your perfecting, God also will satisfy your salvation. So in other words, that he's bringing you to a conclusion. And, and he's talking about salvation. We know that when Paul talks about this, he's talking about salvation. He's saying that salvation ain't over. Just because you've accepted Jesus Christ yeah. as your Lord and Savior. That's the beginning. Yeah. I wish I had a witness yeah. here. That's just the beginning. It ain't over yet. Because he's still working on saving you. Uh, uh, he, he puts it in, in three phases. And that's what salvation really is. Now, salvation deals with justification. Uh -huh. When you accept Christ as your Savior, amen, God saved you from the penalty of your sins. Uh -huh. So now where you were on your way to hell, now you're on your way to hell. Yes, because the penalty of sin is death. Yes. And everlasting separation from God yeah. in hell. Yeah. God dealt with that when you accepted Christ by faith. Yes, sir. Are y'all praying with me? He, he, he paid for the penalty of your sins. But not only, not only did he justify you, he's also sanctifying you. In other words, he's setting you apart. You are unique. You are, you are, you are set apart for the purpose of God. In other words, in other words, God is saving you from your habits. He already saved you from hell. Now he's saving you from your habits. So that every you are less and less like the world and more and more like Jesus. Yeah. It ain't over yet. Yeah. And, then, and then there is also glorification. Yeah. And glorification is God concluding what he started with you in justification. Yeah. When you accepted Christ as your Savior. In other words, he's going to save you from the very presence of sin in your life. Yeah. And that's when Jesus comes back. Yeah. That's the day Come on. Try to act like we ain't got no 
no sin. We are still being redeemed. We're still, I ain't the, I know I ain't the only one in here who's got some things that God's got to get out of me before Jesus gets back here. And some things he's got to put in me before I can stand before Christ. Come on, somebody.